let's take a look at creating circular patterns in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. Here I am in SOLIDWORKS. I have a very simple part that I created. I have an extrude that is basically a ring, and then we have a hole that was created with the standard hole wizard. Now I'm going to create a circular pattern of that. To get to the pattern command, you can go to this dropdown, and you'll notice that in SOLIDWORKS, you have a separate command for each of the different kinds of patterns that you have. For example, you can create linear patterns. Here we have the circular pattern. There's also a mirror from this drop-down list. And then we have our other different kinds of patterns like table pattern, fill pattern, and so on. Let's go to the circular pattern. And when we click on that, it opens up the property manager. So the first thing in here is to define the direction for the pattern axis. In other words, essentially picking the axis that you want to pattern about. Now, one thing about SOLIDWORKS is that it de-emphasizes using actual axes. You can pick a cylindrical surface and it will grab the center of that axis. And one thing to note is that Onshape was created by the same people who created SOLIDWORKS and Onshape doesn't even have axes at all in there. They use cylindrical surfaces for defining a center axis for everything. So right now we have a spacing of 15 degrees. Here it says two instances. Let me select the features and faces that we want to pattern and I will select the hole that I created. You can see the partial preview of the hole. If you go to full preview, doesn't really change much in this particular case. You can see that something is changing on the computer screen, but we will leave it in the partial preview. And right now we have our spacing of 15 degrees. You can crank that up using the arrows or crank it down. We can also plug in a value manually. And then here we have our number of instances that we can increase. Alternatively, you can choose the equal spacing option and now we're getting six instances over 360 degrees and you can change this angle as well. Besides patterning features and faces, well here's the collector for features, here's the collector for faces. If you have disparate bodies in the model, you could check the box for bodies and then select what you want to use, but let's uncheck that and go back to our features and faces. For the second direction, I'm going to check that box. I'm going to change this back to instance spacing. So right now we're getting our patterns created around over here. You do have the ability to flip that direction, but for the second direction, I am going to choose, let's say we're going to do two, three, four, five, so the second direction is going in the opposite direction. And so you can have different angles in direction one and direction two and a different number of instances when you are creating the pattern. So the concept of the second direction in SOLIDWORKS, just give you a heads up, is different than the second direction in Creo Parametric, which we will see in a moment. And Another thing that you have in SOLIDWORKS that you don't have in Creo Parametric is the notion of doing a symmetric pattern. And let me crank down the number of instances. So in this particular situation, I'm creating four instances symmetrically about the original lead feature that was used for the pattern. So that is something else to note. And also, just like in Creo Parametric, you can choose specific instances that you want to skip. For example, maybe I don't want to create that particular instance in the pattern. I can click on it in order to disable it. And another thing to note is that here within the circular pattern, you have the ability to do a geometry pattern. And so, like in Creo Parametric, geometry patterns regenerate faster than standard patterns. So if you have a large number of instances, you may want to use this option. And also we have the option here for instances to vary. Right now it is grayed out based on some of the different selections that I have in here. 
For example, if I disable the second direction, then I can vary the different instances as they are generated here in the model. Let me see if I can grab this box and move it out of the way. So for example, you could have the diameter change in size as the instances are created. Let me change that value. And if I go to, you can kind of see the difference there. When I go to the full preview, then you can see the effect of increasing the increments for the diameter of the holes as they are created in here. So let's hit the check mark. And there we have our circular pattern created. Just to show you another option for creating a circular pattern, let's select this and we're going to suppress it. And I'm going to resume a feature in the model, or excuse me, unsuppress as it's called in SOLIDWORKS. And let's suppress the original hole. Now I'm going to pattern this cut, and it's a circular cut. It is not a hole created with the hole wizard. If I go to my circular pattern and then choose as the feature I want to pattern this particular cut, now I have the dimensions available to me, the dimensions that were used to create this particular feature, and I could choose for defining the pattern this particular dimension and right now we have 15 degrees and four instances. Let me just separate them apart a little bit more. So that is a, another thing to be aware of. With the circular pattern, you can also pattern the different dimensions. Let's hit the check mark, and that way our circular pattern is created. Now let's jump over to Creo Parametric and see how circular patterns are done there. So I have a part open that is pretty much the same as the part that I had in SOLIDWORKS. To create a pattern, you are going to select a feature or a group of features, and then you can choose pattern from the mini toolbar or from the ribbon. And there is a drop-down list, and here you can change between doing a pattern and a geometry pattern. So pattern and geometry pattern are separate commands in Creo Parametric. There is also a command for managing your different pattern tables in the model. But honestly, pattern tables I find very seldomly used anymore. But anyhow, let's go to the pattern command. And when you go to the pattern command, you have a drop down list on the dashboard that allows you to change within the pattern what kind of pattern that you're doing like an axis pattern or fill pattern, here's the table pattern, and so on. Alternatively, if you use the right mouse button, you can get a mini toolbar, and you can use that in order to create what's called an axis pattern in Creo Parametric, which is the same thing as the circular pattern in SOLIDWORKS. But in this case, we are going to select an axis. You're going to pick an axis to mirror about, and here we have for instances located 90 degrees apart. Alternatively, you can define the angular extent, and we can say that we want to have six instances about here evenly spaced, and then those are created. Now let's take a look at defining a second direction. For the second direction, if I change this number here to a value of two, here we're going to get an additional ring. Let me change the radial distance so that the instances are a little further apart. You can see them with the preview dots. And then we can say, hey, let's get a third ring of these different instances. Another thing that you have, similar to SOLIDWORKS, here we can click in the dimension collector, and we have the different dimensions available for the holes. And you could increment the diameter dimension in the first direction, and you can choose different dimensions to increment in the second direction as well. But let me remove this and then just hit the check mark to show you the pattern of instances that you get. Let me take this pattern and I'm going to edit definition of it. And instead of doing an axis pattern, we could choose a dimension pattern. And once again, we can get to that from the mini toolbar. Let me use this one. 
and it says hey the existing pattern members may not be reused so forth and so on let me click the yes button in order to proceed and in this particular situation i could choose the 30 degree dimension and let's do an increment of 60 degrees and we have six instances and then we could choose in the second direction we can pick the radius dimension over here and for the increment we can say hey let's grab 25 we could change the number of instances so you could use a dimension pattern within the feature pattern in order to create those subsequent rings of the different features let's hit the check mark and those are a couple of ways in which you can create your circular patterns inside of Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.